open. Now, what are your risks of being exposed? If you're exposed to meat glue, what are some of the problems associated with getting exposure to meat glue? There are a number of different ones, and this is especially true, again, if you have a diagnosis of celiac or if you are non-celiac gluten sensitive. Or otherwise sometimes referred to as NCGS. Okay, so if you if you know this is true about yourself, you know, if you're celiac, you've probably been to a GI doctor, you've probably had a scope, you've probably been diagnosed. Now if you're non-celiac gluten sensitive, you know, the best way to know about that is genetics. And that's doing uh, specifically doing what's called HLA genotyping. Uh, because if you have the HLA genotype for uh, for gluten sensitivity, not just celiac disease, but for non-celiac gluten sensitivity, then what happens is every time you expose yourself to gluten, the genes activate to produce inflammation in response to that exposure. So again, whether you've had the GI diagnosis of celiac or whether you've had genetics done appropriately, um, either one of these are scenarios where you'd want to avoid gluten. And if you, again, if you fit that then these are the potential consequences. Now, if you're not celiac or you don't have gluten sensitivity, there are still consequences and we're gonna talk about that too. But number one, we know that it increases permeability of the gut, okay? So we know that gluten uh, or meat glue exposure can increase the development, the risk of the development of leaky gut. We know it makes proteins more allergenic Okay, and what does that mean? It, it basically, it takes friendly proteins. Remember, it's meat glue. What does it do? It bonds and binds protein together, right? So you might have protein A from a food that you're eating and then you get that meat glue and it forms a novel new protein, right? So it leads to uh, a neo protein, a new protein. And your immune system might not recognize that. And so that's what allergenicity is. Your immune system recognizes that it's a foreign because it's forming a new protein from that and that's going to create allergenicity so it makes you allergic so let's say you're eating for example a steak and it's made out of meat glue and and meat tidbits and you react to it and you don't feel well right you may not be reacting to the meat directly you may be reacting to again to the new proteins that are formed as a result of that meat glue binding and uh, homogenizing that meat together and we can also see an increased gluten reaction. There's some research sh coming up now that, that shows that meat glue um, can actually activate celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. So it actually can exacerbate it and make it worse. That's why a lot of people that go on the gluten-free diet but buy a lot of these products that are processed that contain these, you know, this transglutaminase or this meat glue continue to have persistent symptoms. And, uh, and, 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 and again, we have the science that kind of backs this up, right? So it activates or contributes to or continues the perpetuation of a celiac-like response. We know that meat glue can alter protein function. Remember, this, this, this shape in the, in the center of this is a protein, right? And proteins fold. And so the, the, the morphology or the shape of proteins dictate the function. If you've ever heard me say Square tires, right, don't roll. Structure dictates function. And so the structure or the shape of a protein as it's folding dictates its function, how it's going to work in your body. Well, if you add an enzyme from the food that you're eating that alters the shape, right, turns that round tire into a square tire, right, that now won't roll, then you have altered protein function. And if that protein is an important protein and its job is to help you digest your food, for example, now we run into problems. And this can happen in the GI tract, so altering a protein function. Now we also know that, that your body will, that meat glue itself as a foreign entity will sometimes actually contribute to your immune system re attacking it. So we, there's a, there's a process called loss of tolerance, and we'll talk about that in just a minute too, but this is part of how that happens, is you lose tolerance to, to it, and so then your immune system recognizes it. Instead of looking at it as food, 
it actually starts to attack it. So again, these are ways that meat glue can actually impact and affect your health. And coming backward here just a little bit, remember, these are the foods that if you're eating these on a consistent daily basis, regular basis, then you're running a great risk of not recovering, especially if you're a gluten sensitive individual and you're trying to overcome the years of gluten induced damage. Again, a lot of people, what do they do? They go gluten free diet, but their diet is full of processed food. So they go to that grocery food aisle, right? That says label gluten free. The gluten free food aisle in the grocery store is predominantly this stuff right here. It's this junk, right? And it's got this potential for meat glue, not, and not just meat glue, other food additives, dyes, preservatives, etc. And so then they don't actually end up having any great degree of recovery. And so that's, that's part of the problem. So here's some things I wanted to show you as well on that same note. So I wanted to come back over here and talk about some what are the researchers are saying. So this was this image here was was published in the journal Frontiers in Pediatrics um, by Matthias Torsten and, Ler and uh, Aaron Lerner. And so this these guys are super brilliant scientists, and they're doing a lot of research right now into the arena of autoimmune disease, celiac disease, and as well the meat glue and the food additives and the food preservatives as being triggers. And so you can see in this diagram you've got food additives. This is not just meat glue, so let's just point that out too, that it's not just meat glue, although meat glue is one of the food additives, not labeled on the, on the package, but the food additives. Um, and then a lot of your engineered microbes, okay, so engineered microbes, that's, that's microbial transglutaminase, that's what that is. So it creates a food product that is being added to food, and so what happens is you get MTG. And what is MTG? That stands for microbial transglutaminase. So if you remember, I wrote that on the board earlier, that word, microbial transglutaminase, this is meat glue, right? So in a nutshell, this is your meat glue. Yeah, there we go. And so what does meat glue do? It in increases PTMP enzyme activity. What, what does that mean? Um, it means it, it changes the nature of proteins, as I mentioned earlier. This is just a fancier way of saying it. And this is happening in your intestine, right? And so that increases antigen modification. What does that mean? That, that means it, it basically, through changing and altering of your proteins, it creates the higher risk of developing an allergy to those proteins, which increases the ability of this allergy complex to, to bind to what's called MHC. Now, we're getting pretty technical here. MHC stands for major human uh, or um, uh, major histocompatibility. It's, it's a type of receptor that sticks off of your immune cells. So you can see this is the receptor sticking off. And so this protein, which has been modified, okay, is now being recognized as foreign and that's why it's binding to that M MHC complex. And so when that happens, we lose tolerance. We lose the ability to tolerate it, and so we get T cells. T cells are immune cells that actually create a response against that protein, and then the byproduct of that response, we're getting intestinal damage that can actually mimic celiac disease as well. So not only um, may you already have celiac disease as a result of gluten exposure, for example, but going and eating these types of foods can actually contribute to celiac-like disease. It's actually been one of the things that's been identified as a trigger for villous atrophy. So meat glue in and of itself. So even again, this is what I said, even if you're not gluten sensitive, if you're not a celiac, you may still be developing intestinal damage as a result of the way the body looks at meat glue and as the way meat glue processes and changes proteins inside of your GI tract. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.